Sleep. Sleep is the most important time of the day. That sounds funny because we're completely unaware of what's happening, but it is the most important time of the day for the brain. Remember when Dean said the brain is the most active organ in the body, it consumes 25% of your body's energy constantly. It's always awake. We sleep, but the brain continuously works. So because it's a very active organ, it produces a lot of waste products. It is under a lot of pressure. It actually is continuously trying to process things. So it needs a process to get rid of all the garbage material and to restore. And when does that happen? During sleep. Now, it's the, the most important thing to remember about sleep is two functions. When we sleep, two things happen. The first thing that happens is consolidation of memory, which means that all of the information that we're gathering during the day, say, you know, I've been, I've been up since seven in the morning and I've been talking to a lot of you and I've been trying to remember names, I've been learning new things, I've been looking at all these beautiful books out here. All of that information just goes and lies on a notepad of some sort, okay? Just like scribbles. When I sleep, all of that information goes into a metaphorical file, folder, and cabinet so that it's easier for me to retrieve it tomorrow and the day after, later on. So the information is consolidated during sleep. Now, when people don't sleep, that information doesn't go into the file folder and cabinets and it's lost. And that's why a lot of people have memory problems, short-term memory recall, problem-solving issues, making good decisions and judgment if they have sleep deprivation. Shift workers, like nurses who work in the ICU, or cops, or people who are basically challenging their circadian rhythm, they experience a lot of cognitive impairment. And in this particular study, they showed that long-term night shift workers who actually have disruption of their sleep cycle, which suppresses their melatonin production, were at a higher risk of cognitive impairment. This study actually showed that sleep deprivation causes microglia, which are brain cells, they're called the janitor cells, to go nuts. So this is the second function of sleep. The first one was memory consolidation. The second one is detoxification. The brain detoxifies itself during sleep. We have microglia, small little janitor cells, that go and start eating away at the broken parts of the brain, you know, the damaged parts of the brain. But when we don't sleep, and during chronic sleep deprivation, these cells actually start eating away at the healthy parts of the brain. And that's why chronic sleep deprivation has been associated with a smaller sized brain. The brain actually shrinks with sleep deprivation. And that's what this study actually showed. Um, obstructive sleep apnea, any disorder that disrupts the architecture of sleep, such as sleep apnea, puts us at an increased risk for Alzheimer's disease. In a study at Florida University, they found out among 13,000 participants that sleep apnea increased the risk of Alzheimer's by 70%. And Dean and I are actually studying that in another large nationwide sample where we found out that when people have sleep apnea, but they were diagnosed early on and they started using CPAP machine, they were able to lower their risk of Alzheimer's disease. So treatment made a big difference. Sleep apnea is an epidemic. Not only does it affect brain health, it actually increases the risk for myocardial infarction, heart attacks, for diabetes, eating patterns, behaviors, depression, mood. So identification of sleep apnea is critical. And again, you know, people ask us, what about medication? If, if I can't sleep, Oh, is it okay if I take medication that my doctors give me? And we say, yes, it's okay. Short-term medications are fine because it's important for people to feel rested. But medication is not a long-term solution. The long-term solution is always things like cognitive behavioral therapy or sleep hygiene mechanisms that need to be instituted as soon as possible. And remember, people quit on cognitive behavioral therapy and sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene is another long talk, which essentially means you know, identification of environmental factors that make you sleep better. Your bedroom should be like a spa. 
It literally should be like a spa. It's the best place where your brain detoxifies itself. So finding out the right temperature of what temperature is perfect for you, even bed sheets, neck pillow, mattress comfort, what you eat before sleep, making sure you don't eat food right before going to bed. Because as we grow older, you know, regardless of the type of food we eat, the food digestion slows down and the process of digestion actually keeps us awake. And the food that we eat revs us up and people can't sleep. And then cognitive behavioral therapy for running thoughts, you know, not being able to shut down your mind. What do you do? You know, having things like a small little notebook at, on your nightstand to write down everything, or maybe in that white, uh, whiteboard that Dean was talking about, to kind of getting things off of your mind and transferring it to something else to calm your mind down. Mindful breathing, all of these are parts of sleep hygiene. So we cannot emphasize how important sleep is, and especially making sure that one goes through each and every stage of sleep, because those are responsible for memory consolidation and detoxification. So in summary, sleep apnea identification is critically important because it raises risk for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, it cleanses the brain, and it consolidates memory. And all of these have to be done at the same time.